Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, tonight we're going to do something a little different. Uh, coming to the need on the next couple projects that I have to heat up a lot of stock at one time. Uh, long lengths of stock. One time my two burner forks just isn't quite big enough to do that, so I've decided to go ahead and build my three burner forks. Just wear your PPE, okay? Anytime. Anytime you're grinding anything like that, wear it. It's just the smart thing to do. It really is. here uh, who knows I'll make something out of that I don't know what yet but we'll sell the side maybe we'll make a video out of it one day okay so we got the bottom of our forge here now this is just an old air tank uh, not quite sure the gallon size but I could tell you though what I mentioned is I know it's got a 12 inch diameter now it's down to a 17 and a half inch length Plenty big enough. Um, I'm going to use two inch tail wool to line this thing. So, two inches all the way around, I'll have an eight inch diameter opening on the inside, 17 and a half inches long. So, I should have more than enough space because you don't want to go any more than about 330 to 350 cubic inches per burner. Um, or just ain't going to heat up right. Uh, I'm not going to go the standard one inch thick tail wool and make two coats. I actually bought two inch thick K-Wool, uh, 2800 degree fire blanket up from high temp tools. I actually used that on my last forge build and it worked great. Um, next thing I'm going to do here, we got to get all this paint off of this. So, as you can see, it's cleaned up. Pretty well done. Uh, I'm wipe it off. See everything in my shop right here is covered in red dust. It's the paint. This is why you wear your PPE and a dust mask because that shit is terrible for you. But anyways, uh, next step: clean this edge up. And I'm thinking two inches down, since I'm using two-inch wool. I don't want my metal protruding past that because then it'll cook it. Two inches down, weld that top and bottom, cut it off. This is going to be my support for my slides for my fire brick door. So once these are in, I'll be able to put my angle iron on and have that to hold my brick in place to move in and out. So let's take care of that next. And we're we wrap.
got it cleaned up. What I want to do is take my tape measure, mark a piece of this. side cleaned up and we can match the other side. Got this thing set like I want. So these eyeballs in the front and the back to make sure they line up. That's the best way to do it. Angle like so, 
well to the front, top and bottom like that, to make the track for the fire brick. See that? Now I have the right size angle, of course, so this fire brick will slide. I'll put two side by side on the front as well on the back. That way I can keep it closed on one side or the other, open it up, whatever I want to do. Flip it around and do the next one. Hmm. You know, I may end up keeping these in the studio. Clean them up, make them look decent. This sits pretty good like that. What do y'all think? I think so. Okay, we're gonna clean this one up. Let's see where we're at. down here levels it up I don't gotta put any other feet on it now all around I think that worked out great doing that I'll clean these welds up here the tacks on the top that you can see probably throw another bead around the inside of these just to ensure that it all holds together well because it is a lot of heat even though it is insulated I want warping and things like that so yeah I'd say all in all so it's pretty good like this Next, we are going to get our measurements for that, so for our burners, and that'll be in the next video. So that's going to wrap this video up. If you liked it, thanks for watching. Uh, stick around for part two, where we're going to drill the holes in, get the burner mounts in place, and hopefully build the burners. So come back. If you like it, hit the like button, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.